It was billionaire businessman Mark Cuban who said, I believe non-divided stocks are much more than baseball cards. They are worth what you can convince someone to pay for them. In this lesson, we're gonna understand the concept of share owners splitting the profit of the corporation they own. We're gonna compute the dividend income. We're gonna compute the yield for a given stock. And we're gonna compute the interest earned on corporate bonds. All to answer the question, if shareholders own a corporation, are they entitled to some of the profits? Before we get into it, let's take a look at warm up number two. If X represents the price of an item in dollars and Y is a percent, interpret each expression. Well, since Y is a percent, but dividing it by 100 turns it into a decimal. So this means it is Y percent of X. Now we already know that this is Y percent of X. And if we're adding X to it, then we have Y percent of X and X. Now let's take a look at a problem that you will be able to do by the end of this lesson. Adam bought a thousand dollar corporate bond in Labatt Corp. The bond pays 5.7% interest per year. How much does Adam receive in interest each year from the bond? To find the annual interest, we're first going to convert the percentage into an equivalent decimal. So 5.7% is 0 0.057. We're then going to multiply the interest expressed as a decimal by the face value. And the face value is $1,000. So Adam receives $57 in annual interest. If you buy a stock and watch its price rise, it's exciting, but your profit is only realized when you actually sell it. If you buy a stock and watch its price fall, it can be devastating. People have bought stock and watched its price rise for years and then held onto it only to watch the price fall below Below what they paid for the stock. Keep in mind that gains and losses cannot be computed and are not assured until the stock is actually sold. However, your stock portfolio can earn income before you sell shares. Remember, a shareholder is an owner of the corporation. As owners, shareholders are entitled to their portion of the corporation's profit. A profit split among shareholders is called a dividend. Money received from dividends is dividend income. Dividends are usually paid annually or quarterly. The board of directors of a corporation sets the dividend for one share of stock. For major public corporations, this information can be found under the column headed div in the stock table. Your total dividend depends on a number of shares you own. Some corporations do not pay a dividend because the profit is being used to improve or grow the corporation. Some corporations do not pay a dividend because they have no profit. They are operating at a loss. A stock that pays dividends is called an income stock because it provides their owners with income. Some people buy income stocks, which pay dividends for an additional income. The yield of a stock is the percentage value of the dividend compared to the current price per share. Investors use the yield to compute their dividend income to the interest they could have made if they put the money in the bank instead of buying the stock. Other investors are not concerned with dividend income. Instead, they want to buy low and sell high. The stock that is bought for this reason is called a growth stock. A stock can be both an income and a growth stock. Stock is also classified as preferred stock or common stock. Preferred stockholders receive their dividends before common stocks do. And they usually receive a set dividend that does not frequently change. Common stockholders receive dividends only when the board of directors elects to issue these dividends. Additionally, if a company goes out of business, preferred stockholders are entitled to assets and earnings of the company ahead of common stockholders. Dividend payments are mailed to shareholders or electronically transferred to their account. Dividend payments can range in value from a few cents to thousands of dollars because they depend on how much the dividend is and how many shares are owned. Remember that dividends are not guaranteed and can be cut or eliminated if the company decides they need the money. Most companies do not like to cut dividends and disappoint shareholders. If your stock pays a dividend, you want to make sure the amount you are receiving is correct. 
you also want to be aware of how dividend income compares to the bank interest you could have made if you decided to put the money in the bank instead of buying a stock. Just remember that your principal is guaranteed in the bank, while the value of your stock can be volatile. The dividend can be eliminated and you can lose all of your investment in the stock market. Now, let's understand the concept of share owners splitting the profit. Roberta is considering purchasing a common stock that pays an annual dividend of $2.13 per share. If she purchased 700 shares for $45.16 per share, what would her quarterly income be from dividends? <laughs> to find the annual income from dividends, we're going to multiply the number of shares by the annual dividend. So $2.13 times 700 is going to give us 1,491. Now, the annual income from the dividend is $1,491. We're going to divide this by four to get the quarterly income of $372.75. So, Roberta should receive $372.75 as her quarterly dividend payment. Let's check our understanding of this. Jacques purchased eight shares of a corporation that pays Y dollars annual dividend. What is the annual dividend income expressed algebraically? Well, if they have X shares and they are going to receive a dividend of Y dollars per share, then X times Y is going to go ahead and give the annual. Now, it's important to remember that this is annual, so that's in the year. If it's giving a quarterly dividend, then you would have to divide that by four to figure out what that quarterly check would be. Now, let's compute dividend income. Elise owns 2,000 shares of a corporation that pays a quarterly dividend of 51 cents per share. How much should she expect to receive in a year from dividends? First, we need to compute her quarterly dividend by multiplying the total number of shares by the quarterly dividend share. This means we have 2,000 shares times 51 cents per share, giving her $1,020. Now, to find the amount she should expect to receive in a year, we're going to multiply that by 4, which is going to give us $4,080. So she should receive $4,080 in a year. Let's check our understanding of this. Monique owns X shares of a stock. The quarterly dividend per share is Y dollars, and we're going to express Monique's annual dividend amount algebraically. Now, we know from the last check your understanding that X times Y is going to tell us the dividend, but they're talking about this dividend being quarterly means we're going to have to multiply it by four to find the annual dividend amount. To find the yield of a stock, we're going to write a ratio of the annual dividend per share to the current price of the stock per share and convert it to a percent. A yield can change even when the dividend amount does not because the price of the stock changes frequently. Now we're going to compute the yield for a given stock. Kirsten owns a common stock in Max Toy Den. The annual dividend is $1.40. The current price is $57.40 per share. What is the yield of the stock to the nearest tenth of a percent? So we're going to write the yield as a fraction and then convert the fraction to a decimal. Finally, write the decimal as a percent. Now, the yield is equal to the annual dividend divided by the current price, which means in this case, $1.40 divided by $57.40. Now, we're going to want to convert this to a decimal, so we're going to multiply by 100. And this is going to give us 2.4%. So the yield is 2.4%. Let's check our understanding of this. Suppose you buy X shares of a stock for Y dollars per share. The annual dividend per share is D dollars. Express the percent yield algebraically. So we know D dollars is the dividend. So we're going to have the dividend divided by the price per share, which is Y. To turn this into a percent, we simply multiply by 100. One share of Beepco preferred stock pays an annual dividend of $1.20. Today, Beepco closed at $34.50 with a net change of down 50 cents. What is the stock's yield at yesterday's closing price? 
using today's closing price and the net change to find yesterday's closing price. So we know that it is 34.50 and we need to add 50 cents in in order to find yesterday's price, which is $35. So the yield is gonna be the dividend of $1.20 divided by the price of $35. Now we multiply this by 100 and we get 3.4% as yesterday's close, the yield was about 3.4%. Let's check our understanding. One share of Scroycore stocks pay an annual dividend of $1.55. Today, Scroy closed at X dollars with a net change of up 40 cents. Express the yield at yesterday's close algebraically. So we know that we need to put the dividend on top of $1.55 and divide that by yesterday's closing price, which was X dollars plus 40 cents and that's going to give us yesterday's closing price in the denominator now that's our fraction that we multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent a stock paid an annual dividend of two dollars 14 cents the stock split two for one what is the annual dividend after the split after a two for one split, there are twice as many shares outstanding. So the dividend is divided by two, which means that we have $2.14 divided by two. Now the dividend is $1.07. So the new annual dividend per share is $1.07. Let's check our understanding. A corporation was paying $2.10 annual dividend. The stock underwent a three for two split. What is the new annual dividend per share? So we need to set up that three for two split. That's gonna be the fraction two over three. And we're gonna multiply it by the dividend amount of $2.10. This is gonna give us $1.40 as the new dividend. Buying stocks has risks and rewards. If you do not want to take a significant risk, you can invest in corporate bonds. A corporate bond is a loan to a corporation. The corporation agrees to pay the bondholder back with interest, much like a bank does to customers with money on deposit. The interest is usually paid annually or semi-annually. Usually, corporate bonds are for $1,000 or $5,000. This amount is the face value and is the amount paid when the bond matures. When the bond matures, the bondholder receives the face value from the corporation and the loan to the corporation is over. Bondholders do not share in any profits and they do not own part of the corporation. Investors that buy bonds enjoy less risk but have lower potential rewards. The maturity date of a bond is the date in the future when the principal investment will be repaid to the investor. The time of maturity can be a short period or as long as 30 years. Upon maturity, an investor will receive the amount originally invested back from the corporation. Bonds that take longer to mature generally pay a higher interest rate. Bondholders can sell their bonds if they decide not to keep them until the maturity date. Now let's compute interest earned on a corporate bond. Adam bought a $1,000 corporate bond in Labatt Corp. The bond pays 5.7% interest per year. How much does Adam receive in interest each year from the bond? To find the annual interest, we're first going to convert the percentage into an equivalent decimal. So 5.7% is 0 0.057. We're then going to multiply the interest expressed as a decimal by the face value. And the face value is $1,000. So Adam receives $57 in annual interest. Let's check our understanding. If Adam holds the bond from that example for 11 years, how much will he receive in interest? Well, we know that he's gonna receive $57 per year. And when there's 11 of those years, we simply multiply that to get $627.